Hey everyone! So, as you probably know, my big project in 2017 was reading big books. And as part of my final overview and wrap-up of the project, I wanted to talk about the big books that I haven't read yet. I managed to read nine big books in 2017, which I feel is pretty successful. But there are even more still on my shelves that are still there, all big and intimidating. So I wanted to share those with you. The first one is this edition of, you can't see the title, but it is Vanity Fair. This is by William Makepeace Thackeray, and the text in this is pretty decently small. So that combined with the fact that it's a classic book makes it very intimidating. And next is volume one of Remembrance of Things Past by Marcel Proust. The text in this is also pretty small and I really don't know much about this except that it is featured prominently a couple times in Gilmore Girls. Rory mentions it in one of her graduation speeches and I am definitely intrigued. And here you can see from the side just how thick it is. Next is Winter's Heart by Robert Jordan. This is book nine of the Wheel of Time series, and this is a book I'm borrowing from my brother. I will probably read this one in 2018, just because I try to read at least one every year since this is a 14 book series. The text in this is also not big, but since it is a mass market paperback, it's a little bit smaller, though it is still pretty wide. Next is one that I'm really looking forward to and isn't so much intimidating as just big, and that is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This is a fantasy series I've heard a lot of good things about that I really want to get into, but who knows when that'll happen. Here is The Spine, and I specifically ordered this edition because I love this cover and the tone, so hopefully the book will have the same kind of feeling to it. The next one is definitely intimidating and big. That is The Three Musketeers by Alexander Dumas, or Dumas, I don't know. Here it is from the side, and here are the pages, which are green, so it's a very green book, and they're is the inside, so you can get a sense of that. My first introduction to The Three Musketeers was probably through the TV series Wishbone, so we'll get to this actual one someday. Next is this very beautiful copy of Middlemarch by George Eliot. I really love these penguin cloth bound classics. I have a few editions, but this is one that I haven't read yet. The text is very tiny, and I do really want to read this one someday, but again, you know, someday. <laughs> Next is one of the few purple books I have, and that is The Collected Stories of Eudora Welty. This is another one that I have acquired because of Gilmore Girls. I think she is reading Eudora Welty at some point during the show, so I probably got this at a used book sale or library book sale or something like that. Next is an Outlander book, but it is The Outlandish Companion. This one is a companion to the first four books in the series, and right now I've read the first five. I'm currently watching season three on TV, so after that season ends I'll probably go ahead and read this and return it to my mother because of course I am borrowing this from her. This one is a wide spine as well as very tall, but the inside has lots of little illustrations and maps and that sort of thing, so it might go a little bit quicker than it looks. Next is another purple one, and that is Legends Volume 2. I read Volume 1 earlier this year and really enjoyed the experience, so I'm looking forward to reading this one as well, especially since this one has an Outlander story and an American Gods story and the Song of Ice and Fire story, so those are all people that I really like. Ooh, and another Robin Hobb story. This one is just slightly smaller than the one that I read this year, so I think this one will go even faster. Next is this Barnes & Noble edition of The Picture of Dorian Gray and other works by Oscar Wilde. 
I haven't read anything by Oscar Wilde, but I've heard a lot about The Picture of Dorian Gray, and I'm very intrigued. The Picture of Dorian Gray only takes up this part of the book, and the rest of it is other stories, so I might just read the main part on its own and get to the rest sometime later. Here is the full view of the book. Nice and shiny. And there are more big books on my shelves that are just a little too small or not very intimidating, so I'm not including those. But this last one is both very large and very intimidating. And that is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas or Dumas. This is one of the word cloud classics that was gaining popularity a few years ago, and I don't always like their designs, but this is one of the, I think, two that I did end up buying, and it's just a very thick book and probably the tiniest font out of any of the large books that I have, so it's just, it's gonna take forever. <laughs> But I'm gonna do it someday. I, I've seen the movie a long time ago and it's one of my ex-boyfriend's favorite books so that's why I wanted to read it and I'm going to read it someday. Not today. <laughs> so those are the largest or most intimidating or both books that are still on my shelves that I have not yet conquered, but at least the number is a lot lower than it was a year ago. And now that I have spent a whole year reading big books practically every month, I feel a lot more confident about tackling these large tomes. So I would like to know what big books you have on your shelves that you haven't read and are very intimidating. And if you've read any of these and really liked them, I would appreciate any words of support you might have. So that is all for this video. Thank you, as always, for watching. Bye.